Okay, guys, welcome back. Let's see, today I want to talk about concepts, uh, three concepts. You can be thinking like, it's going to be boring. We're going to talk about definitions. Well, yes, I am going to give you some definitions in several slides, but the most important thing that I want to do today is to be sure that we understand those definitions. Why? Because in your exam, I am not going to ask you for the definitions. Well, maybe there is a question about definitions, but it's going to be one point. The real thing that I am going to do in your exam is to ask questions that show me that you understand the definition. I am going to explain to you today what is a dog and what is a cat. Yes, maybe in the exam, I ask you what is a dog, what is a cat. But really what is going to be happening is I am going to show you pictures of animals and I am going to ask you which one is a dog, which one is a cat, or maybe none of them is. Makes sense. So the class is about requirements. The first thing that we, I need to be sure that we understand is that we are in the same page about what is a requirement. And there are some categories of requirements and some characteristics of the requirements that I need to check with you. Good? So concepts, definitions, all about requirements. Let's check. We're going to develop software. We're going to work with a customer. I am not going to assume that you, myself, we are the engineers. We are the ones that are going to do the work. And there is someone else that is asking us to do the work. Let me be clear in my scenario, what I want is to do the work and get a payment for the work, uh, money or a good grade or whatever. The customer, what the customer wants is obviously a product, but let's think about this customer that if I make a mistake or I didn't do exactly what I was asked to do, it's not going to pay me. So if this customer, that is really going to be checking with details that everything that was asked is done or not. And we're going to have a lot of problems in this agreement with the customer <coughs> about I did what you asked me to do or not. I want you to think about not as a developers, but from a business point of view. You do not want to have this discussion about I did the work or not at the end of the semester, or when you have been working on that for one year and you are kind of just expecting the money or the weight or whatever. You want to have this kind of discussion and this kind of agreement for sure from the beginning. And we're going to be talking about Agile and about Waterfall. Right now I am going to think more about the Waterfall, thinking about this contract, thinking about you want to be sure that you understand everything, you agree about everything with the customer because it's going to be in this paper that legally is a bonding between the customer and you, right? Uh, there is something similar with Agile, but in a different way. Right now, the easy way to explain this is think about you are going to sign a contract and you want to be sure that whatever you're going to sign is really something that is good for you, good for the customer, right? That, that is kind of the way of thinking. Forget a little bit about, I am developer, and I want to start working as soon as possible. Maybe you, yes, but remember, this is uh, an enterprise. Uh, you need to think about the payment and you need to think about this agreement, this agreement. So that is what this is about, good? I start with this, uh, we're going to do something. And my something here is this picture. And in the picture is, okay, we're going to do whatever. Please, if we start talking about a web page, if we start talking about a mobile application, if we start talking about a game, your idea, the picture that you have about the final project and the idea that your customer is going to have, your instructor is going to have, they are not the same, period. I mean, the assumption is we are not visualizing the same. Just because we are human beings, we have different backgrounds, we have different experience, this is what is going to happen. The concept never, never, never is going to match. It could be great at match, 
but let's start working, assuming that do not match. And therefore, we are going to check. If match, yes, we're going to finish early. But if not, it is better to know that today, that when you are done doing something, that is not what the customer asked for. <laughs> something that maybe you have read there. What is the best software that you can create? And the people usually think about, oh, a software that is using cloud computing, a software that is using the top technology, high performance computing, quantum computing. Now, the best software that you can create is the software that really accomplish what the customer expects the software to do. It's not about you showing your skills, because that is something that you show to other people, the people that you're going to hire you in a company, or the people that you're working with. But with the customer, what you need to show is that you can create the software that that customer wants. And maybe what that customer wants is use HTML in a web page. It's not fun to do that. But you need to think about it before committing to do that for the customer. But think about satisfaction of the customer. The software to do that is a good software, period. It's not about technology. Now, what do I need to do? What do I need to consider in order to achieve that simple goal? Make my customer happy. Uh, number one, anything that the customer asks you to do, Anything is not a requirement. If we start talking here about you are going to do software and we are doing brainstorming and changing ideas, everything that we talk, everything that I mentioned, if I am the customer, what I am sharing with you are my ideas, my necessities, my needs, my wishes. Use the word that you want, but never, 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 as a customer, I give you a requirement. We do not use the word requirement to label what the customer is sharing or speaking. No, that is clear. I mean, you can be thinking, really? Are you telling me that the customer is not going to give me the requirement? Yeah. I am telling you that the customer is going to share what he or she wants, but that is not called requirement. Don't. Very good question, and I am going to answer in the next slide. Uh, are you telling me that the ideas of the customer are not a requirement? Uh -huh. When some idea from the customer become a requirement? That is your question right now, right? It's like, okay, the customer is speaking. Ideas, ideas, ideas. It is not the responsibility of the customer to give you requirements. The only responsibility of the customer is giving you ideas, necessities, wishes, whatever. It is your work to translate, to move those ideas from the customer, necessities, wishes, or whatever name you want to use, to something that is going to be a requirement. Uh, we're going to talk about requirement engineering next week. I am going to ask you, you have homework today, you are going to read a paper. The paper is about requirement engineering. And I want you to notice that I am using engineering for requirements. And I, really, engineering for just knowing what the customer wants? Yes, it's an engineering process to move from some sentence, some idea, some talk to something that we are going to call requirements. Requirement is kind of an important word. Do not use that word for anything. Clear. Okay, the question was, how do I know that something is a requirement? How do I know or how do I move from necessities to requirements? Easy. I don't know if you have listened to this idea before. Invest in your requirements. Uh, 
invest is the acronym for those ideas, for those words. Anything that the customer wants, It's just an idea. I can ask you, you know what? You're going to do a homework. You're going to develop software. I want you to do a beautiful piece of software. That is what I want. That is something that I am sharing with you. Uh, I, I am going to ask you in your exams, is that a requirement? And in some point you are going to tell me no. How do I go, how do you I going to know that it's not a requirement? Because step number one, Remember that the previous lecture I mentioned two things, uh, ambiguity and testing. Okay, those two things just to start. Today I can give you the full list. What you're going to check in these things is those five points. The most important, you can start with the testing and you can start with uh, valuable. We need to check all of them. <laughs> so let's think about it. Any sentence, any idea that I share with you, You are going to read the sentence or you are going to ask yourself, that sentence is independent. Independent, the meaning is, is disconnected for, from other things. Can be done individually. It is just one piece of the system. Independence. We're going to go into the details in the implementation, don't worry. But an idea of independency is something that is one alone. Something like this, the last one. You can question independency because this word. You can question independency because if I ask you if this one, C, is a requirement, you're going to think this one is independent. And the first thing that you're going to notice is like, you are talking about two things. Uh, two things that doesn't seem to be separate things, independent things. Uh, let me be clear. We, each of you, is an independent entity. We are here together. We are collaborating. I am talking with you. You can talk with me. But you are alone, separate from your classmates, separate from the professor. Independency. Uh, the states in the US, Arizona from California, we are together but we are independent. Each of them move different, right? So when you have some requirement, you have some text, some sentence, and you notice these connections. Connections, I am talking about these, or maybe these, or maybe these. When you notice all these words in a sentence, that sentence is talking about things that are not independent. And therefore, that line is not a requirement. Professor, but the customer wants the sparky dancing and jumping. OK, your work, my work, is that line C alone is not a requirement. It's two requirements. Wait, you just mentioned that it's not a requirement. But now you're telling me that these two requirements. Yes, I never tell you that was wrong and you should put that in the garbage. I was telling you that that was not one requirement, that that need to be worked. Engineering, remember? 
And the way that we solve the problem, the way that we work that line and transforming requirement for that example for independency is use cut the connection. Make sense. Oh, so you're telling me that show the sparky dancing could be one thing, and then the only thing that you want is to show the sparky jumping like a letter D, and now you are happy. Now we have independence. Makes sense. Uh, we're going to review details, but again, in English, <laughs> conclusions, and, or, etc. when, if, all those conditions, those kind of sentence, suspicious, usually could be. Good? Okay, D and C are independent now. What about D and A? They are independent. Beautiful. It's only one thing, right? Probably we do not understand what is beautiful, but it's one thing, whatever. Uh, Java is one thing. Uh, we need to review the others, but it's one thing. Independency, I think we can move forward. Clear. Okay, just because they are independent, they are requirements. No, we need to review all the letters. Negotiable. Negotiable. It's a very fancy word. The meaning is, or what I want you to think about is not ambiguous. We can negotiate something if we both understand the something. If we do not have the same idea, if the something is kind of unclear, you can understand something, I can understand something different. Therefore, there is not going to be a negotiation. Negotiation, clear, unambiguous. And this is maybe the most difficult part because it's very easy to think that just because I understand something, everyone else is going to think in the same way that I think. My invitation, guys, always, always, always check and search for one case in which you can think about a friend or a person that you know that you can think like, I am sure that my friend here or there is going to found this to be interpreted in this way. And it's a different way to the way that I saw this line. Just think about that small space of someone thinking different from you, because then you found this ambiguous statement. Common errors. Professor, I understand that 100%. Yeah, you. But that doesn't mean that it's clear. Why? I understand. Yes, but remember, we're talking about business. We're talking about contracts. So it's not only about us. Negotiable. Can we negotiate sparky jumping? If I ask you to do a program with sparky jumping, we have a clear idea about what is the meaning of jumping and what is the meaning of sparky. And I, want, I am going to assume, yes, right? Worst case scenario, I show you a picture of a sparky. This is sparky and jumping. Well, jumping, I can show you what is jumping or we assume that we know what is jumping. That is a good assumption. Sparky dancing. Uh, worst case scenario, you're going to ask me dancing what? But dancing, uh, something. And Sparky again, we know who is Sparky. Uh, C and D, hopefully you agree with me, we can negotiate. Negotiation doesn't mean that they are complete or good to go, but at least we can start talking about it and we understand the idea. We understand dancing, we understand Sparky, moving forward. Use Java. Now, worst case scenario, I need to explain you what is Java, the programming language, but using, yeah, using for programming. So it's kind of negotiable, right? We understand what is that. What about beautiful software? This is a common point for reflection. 
if I ask you for something to be beautiful, if I ask you for something to be fast, if I ask you for something to be easy to use, anything that I ask you that is subjective is not negotiable. When I ask you for a beautiful software, you need to think about, we cannot agree about what we consider to be beautiful. We cannot agree in what we consider fast and so on. Any time that you saw an adjective in a sentence, I am not giving you a recipe, but just some hints. When you saw an adjective there, you think twice, like this is going to be the same for everyone in my team, in the stakeholders, the customer. Uh, do we really share the same idea about what this fast, beautiful, or whatever other adjective you use? Usually the answer is going to be no. And usually the, the thing is we need to fix it. That number A is not a requirement. That number A is use a necessity, a wish, and a stain. Put the name that you want, not a requirement. What do we need to do in order to move that one to be a requirement, at least from the point of view of negotiable? Because it's already independent, but negotiable. What can we do? Replace the adjective, right? What kind of replacement could work? Okay, you consider beautiful anything that is using ASU colors, maroon and gold, just like that, that is beautiful. Okay, that is something that I can put there. So forget about beautiful. We are not talking anymore about beautiful. We are just talking about, you want me to use those colors. Did you notice the change? Like, really, you think that the gold and maroon in any place are going to make a beautiful shower? Okay, you are the customer. I am just going to follow the instruction. We are not here to judge the customer. We are here just to put everything clear. That is what I am doing. Uh, obviously that is just something that I put there. It's not that I consider beautiful put maroon and gold everywhere, but you get the idea, right? Now, all my examples are independent. Now, all my examples are negotiable. Yes or no? Again, just because now we can start talking about these ideas and we are in the same page and we are talking about one idea at the same time one line uh, every attempt good next they should be valuable they should have some value value for whom for the customer for the customer yep uh, so value for the customer. Uh, test cases per method have value for the customer. Uh, but the customer could want some security or the customer could want that the software didn't fail. And I am adding those test cases to accomplish that. Okay, then the requirement is robust. The requirement is secure, but the requirement is not the test cases because the test cases is something that you're going to do to accomplish the requirement. And you do not put in the contract how you are going to solve that. We're going to talk about that later, those are tasks. But the requirement itself 
is different. Two concepts that we're going to review later, requirement and how to achieve the requirement, task or activities. That is something that we're going to review later. The first thing is, please, you need to think about what is the thing that the customer wants? Not how are you going to solve it, what the customer wants. And that should be the requirement. What about the second one? I would like you to put Java doc documentation in all your classes and your metrics. The customer is going to review your source code. I am going to give you one of the specifications of the homeworks that I asked my students to do, my students in other classes. And you're going to notice that as a customer, I asked my students to put documentation. <laughs> and I am going to ask you which of the things that I have here in the specifications for the homework is a requirement. And I want to be sure that you know that that second one, the, the Java dot, is not a requirement. Why not have no value for the customer? The customer don't care about the Java dot documentation. The customer wants the final product, the dot class, unless, and this is going to be an exception. The product that you are doing is a library, unless you work for a company that develops frameworks or libraries, and that Java doc is going to become the API documentation online, then that is a requirement. But did you notice the clear context that I am mentioning right now? Is something that have value. If you are doing a framework, a library, yes, of course. If not, no one is going to be able to use it. But if I ask you to do a mobile application and your customer wants the application running or the web page running, your customer don't care about the Java doc. But my manager is asking me to do that. Okay, is your manager thing or your company thing something that the company wants in order to be able to continue with the product if you leave? but it's not a requirement for the software because requirements are all about the customer, not your team, your company, whatever. Clear? Good. Next one. Estimation. Every single thing that you consider to be a requirement, after you know that it's dependent, after you know that it's negotiable, after you found that it's valuable for the customer, the next question that you should ask yourself is, can I estimate this thing? Estimation is, can you tell yourself, how many days or hours do you need to do that? Professor, I do not know because I do not have experience doing something like this before. Don't worry, estimation. Tell me, you can do it. Uh, have you done something similar? You know the path that you're going to follow? Even if you need to learn a new library or a new IDE or whatever, it's like, you know. Can you tell me how many time do you need? Even if it's one month, can you do the estimation? Yes or no? Uh, why? Guys, the best way to know if we understand something is to ask us if we can measure the final product when we're going to complete that final product. Even for you that are developers, uh, maybe you're familiar. One approach to develop something, test, drive, developing, implies to do further test cases and then accomplish the software. Why? Because testing or measuring the final product is something that helps us to understand things. I am going to talk, to talk more about testing later, but right now is first, can I imagine if I can do it? And therefore, can I put a number of how many time do I need? Or how many people do I need to hire? Maybe I do not know how to do it, but I know that I have friends that maybe can help me. And my friends, oh, I remember that I have this friend that finished something like this in one year, two months, one month. It's like, 
you think about if you can do it, if it's possible to do it. If that is the case, you can move forward. It's a requirement. If not, you need to stop and ask for help, talk with others, your team. But if you cannot estimate yourself or with the team, it's very risky to put that as a requirement. Yeah. You need to be able to quantify every single variable if one want to use that involved on that part. Here, can you estimate Sparky jumping? Uh, in this point, it's like, okay, you want Sparky jumping. Uh, I have never do a video game, but I remember that in Java, we have this idea of threads, multi-threading, and probably jumping can be done in a thread that is showing picture of a spark in different positions. And that is going to give me the idea of uh, jumping. So probably to create a thread, I need this time. To create the pictures, I need this time. I can put things together. Yes, I think that I can put things together. So give me a week or give me a day or depending on your experience. I don't care about the time. We will talk about the time later. But the fact is, can I estimate? I can. So I can say, Sparky jumping, good to go. Estimation done. What about Sparky dancing? You can be thinking it's exactly the same that dance, that jumping and dancing. You say I'm going to change the picture. Using Java, is Java or not? Right. I mean, can we estimate that thing? Do I know Java or not? Yes. Okay, I can program with Java. I can program with Java immediately. Yes, immediately. Uh, you can start asking me questions about Java, and I can start creating source code in Java. You are going to notice the difference between the B and the C and the D. Uh, something is going to happen with them. But so far, yeah, I can estimate. Uh, the estimation is not about a particular program. It's a, just about, can you use it or not? Yes, good. Can you put the colors maroon and gold? Can you estimate the time that you need? And it's like, well, worst case scenario, I have no idea what color is maroon. So I am going to go search for maroon. I am going to get the air uh, GB numbers and that's it. Okay, yes, I can do it. But you do not know where are you, when, in which place are you going to use it? I don't care. Uh, for using the colors, I just need the numbers for the color, right? Good to go, independent, negotiable, valuable, and I can estimate them. Small. This is small is connected with the first one, independency. Independency gives you one. But now you need to ask yourself, that one, one, is something that one person can do. Usually the question is one person. I am not telling you uh, in one week, in one month. I am just asking you, you, one single developer, you can do it without working with a team. If you tell me that you can do it, but you need a team of three or four, that thing is not a small. And therefore it's not a requirement. If you tell me that you can do it, but you need a month, or two months is a requirement, don't worry. Because I am not evaluating how many times do you need. I am just asking you if you can imagine that thing done by one person. There is not a measure really, but my recommendation for you is think about one person, period. And doesn't matter the time, one person. When you start thinking about, okay, that one person is going to need five years, uh, then we are in progress. And to be honest, can we estimate that this need one person for five years? I mean, when you start talking about two years or so, uh, probably you really do not want to mention that this is not something that you are going to do alone. Think about months, one person, if yes, it's small. 
If not, it's not too small. If it's not too small, you need to cut, right? For instance, It's independent. Uh, you want a Pac-Man game? It's not connected with anything else. There is no conjunction there or thing like that. So it seems to be pretty independent. Uh, it is negotiable. Uh, do we understand what is Pac-Man? Uh, do we understand what is a web page? So it's like, there is no point for something that is unclear. Okay, it is valuable. Uh, for me, it's valuable and I am the customer. I want the people that visit my web page to have joy playing Pac-Man. Uh, can you estimate? Yeah, the Pac-Man is there or is not there? Uh, how many times do I need to complete the Pac-Man? Months, maybe. It's less than a year. I mean, you can finish a Pac-Man game in less than a year. Uh, you do not need to know this, but it's 1,000 lines of code, so it can be estimation. I can estimate that. It is small. And when you think about the small, it's like, um, I have a problem. Doing a full game is something that is kind of small task. And hopefully you agree with me like, um, it's not a small because the idea is very simple, a Pac-Man game. But then if you start thinking like, well, but this Pac-Man game is going to have a labyrinth and it's going to have the Pac-Man and the Pac-Man needs to be controlled and there are the enemy, the enemy are the ghosts. And when you start thinking about what is the meaning of the Pac-Man and all the things that are inside, it's not small. The point is when you have a requirement, you think about this circle, and think about what is inside. Think about the elements. And if you can find a way in which you can split these elements in one way that what is inside can be a requirement, that is a signal that what you have is a requirement that is not as small, and your task is to split that one in a small requirements. In my example of the Pac-Man, probably the requirements should be, I need the Pac-Man because the Pac-Man needs to be controlled by the keyboard or the mouse or whatever. <laughs> and probably my requirement should be, I need to create the maze because the maze is not just something always the same. There is an algorithm there to create different mazes. And probably my requirement should be to create the ghost because the ghost move in a smart way. And, and this moving in a smart way is a full new requirement, a full new idea, right? So even though at the beginning, this looks like one, in reality, looks like one because we're familiar with that word, but that word is telling me a bunch of things inside, a bunch of requirements. Sorry, again. The second one, the using the color? Not really. Uh, something is going to happen with the second one later. But just imagine that you are doing one part of the project. You are doing your work today. And I tell you, you are going to use these colors. I am not telling you that you are responsible for the colors in everything. I am just telling you, use these colors in whatever you are doing. I need to go into the details for that. But the second one, I am safe because it's use, use the colors and I can prove that I use the colors. 
Maybe the only thing that I did today was a rectangle on the screen and I use the colors. It's kind of a particular way of thinking uh, in the business in which I am showing you that I did what is here, even though it could be like uh, too selfish because you only show me one part, not the big picture, but it's the way of thinking for the text. I am going to show you more. Yeah. Um, so requirements are supposed to be objective, right? Um, because I could see where the customer is like, Pac-Man has already been developed. Maybe like if Flash Player was still a thing, you know, you just embed Pac-Man game into your website, it's a piece of cake. So I don't know, it seems ambiguous to me on- Very good point. Uh, I used the example there, assuming that I was hiring you, well, hiring a, a team to develop the product. And just as an academic example, that was my way of thinking, and that was my assumption with the team. Like, you know what is the Pac-Man, but you cannot, or there is not a available and already Pac-Man implemented outside. When we move to that, uh, if we have that, uh, idea in the context, adding the Pac-Man into my web page, just adding, because what you are developing is something else, like, I don't know, my ASU web page, and you just need to add the Pac-Man, and the Pac-Man is something like a product ready to use. That is a completely different idea and can be one requirement, because it's just adding the Pac-Man from whatever source. So in that case, one requirement, my idea, my thinking, was the other developing the Pac-Man. In that case scenario, several requirements. Very good point. Something can be good or bad, depending on the context. And you need to always think about the context. I mentioned before this idea of uh, the Java doc. And my mention is Java doc in the common scenario is irrelevant, but in a particular way, in a particular context, doing a framework that is not most of the project could be important. That is going to be the same case in different examples. Recommendation for you, for the class, for the exam. When you have a question, be sure that you understand the context because the question is going to be there in a particular context. Here, we're talking about business. What is our context? And then we can take decisions. So, good point, good. How do you, how do you do the different types of negotiable in the requirement? Like, for example, different. Oh, okay. The most important thing for me when I mention negotiable is the idea of everyone understand what that is. I am using this fancy word negotiable, but I want, but what I want you to understand here is it is clear. It is not ambiguous. If something, the line, it is not ambiguous, it is clear. If we all understand the idea in the same way, then we can negotiate. And negotiable is kind of very open, very fancy, but the idea is that line is clear. That line is not ambiguous. If yes, you can say it is negotiable. Make sense? Moving forward, uh, the last one, testing. It is connected somehow with the estimation, but I just want to be sure that we notice the difference. Uh, estimation is about resources. It's about, you can tell me how many time or how many people do you need to accomplish that requirement? Uh, can you tell me that you can finish alone in a particular amount of time that is less than one year? Just to give you an idea. Uh, remember, it's business. I cannot give you a specific threshold. I am just giving you numbers to think about it. But then one thing is to think that I can do it. And the next part is the testing part. Can you explain to me how you are going to show me that you accomplish that requirement? What are you going to do to test that thing. First is when you are alone to test that you are done. But second, when you are with the customer to show the customer here, this is what you ask for. 
Some requirements are going to be very easy to test. It's going to be yes or no. Uh, think about the sparky dancing or the sparky jumping. What are you going to do to test those? Uh, run and in the computer, I should see the dancing or the running. I mean, there is no other thing is yes, no, it's going to happen or not. But some requirements are not going to be used like that. Some requirements are going to be a little bit more complicated. More complicated, yes. Uh, let's see, W, it should be fast. Is a requirement, yes or no? Okay, why not? Which one is not correct? Okay, everyone agree with that. Why? It is not clear. Why is it not clear? Because I am talking about fast. Fast is an adjective. An adjective is something that for me, fast could be one second, for you can be one millisecond of the opposite. It is not clear. Anything with adjective is complicated, not negotiable. Yes. Clear? Can we fix it? Yeah. What is what? What if we define what fast means for the customer? That is what we need to do to define fast for the customer. And we do that, removing fast. It's not a good idea. It should run, load, whatever, something. Wait, 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 it's exactly the same, but with different words, yes. But with the new words, now it's a requirement. The requirement is no longer to be fast because that is ambiguous. The requirement is the software tool and put something there is load the software, the window appear or read the file, or I don't know, what are you doing? But that's something specifically, and you need to choose one of these, only one. This backslash is two requirements. We move to the independent part, but you choose one. I am going to leave you load in five seconds or less. Uh, can I put fast there? No, because fast can be ambiguous, but five seconds or less is very clear. And what I am going to do to test it, uh, run the program and check one, two, three. Okay, five seconds or less. Make sense? Guys, very easy. In your exam or in other work that we're going to do, when you talk with your customer, something that I am asking you to do for every single idea, like these ones, where these ideas come from? I don't know, a meeting that you have with the customer, you are going to take notes. For every single line in your notes later, the requirement engineering process is to check that and ask those questions. You do not put in the garbage, the lines that do not fulfill those elements. What you do with the lines that do not fulfill the elements is to fix them. Fast, no, change it. Independent, no, split. That is your work. Move from necessities or whatever to requirements, fixing those things, clear. Obviously, if I show you a line in the exam and I just ask you, this is a requirement, yes or no, I am not asking you to fix it because it's going to be maybe one point. I am just asking you, tell me, it is or not? And if any of these letters is not good, your answer should be no. Makes sense. If you tell me yes, it's a very strong statement. Because when you tell me yes, this is a requirement, what you are telling me is that that line fulfill all of this. When we call something a requirement, we're telling that that something is independent, is negotiable, is valuable, can be tested. I can estimate the time and is small. 
this is what happened when we call something a requirement. We are telling that all of this is true. Clear. So, will uh, regression not be decided as part of deciding this requirement? I mean, if it will cause multiple uh, uh, functionality flaws or it will cause multiple defects and all of that while defining the requirement or while working on it. You're talking about compatibility in the bad ones? That could be requirements. That is going to be a requirement. Uh, if you tell me, and probably you're thinking about the product backlog and where I put things. I am going to talk about that later, but just talking about how to express that. If you tell me that the product, the new one, should be backward compatible, that is a requirement, yes or no? And I am asking you to read that and to tell me backward compatibility is a requirement or not? Yes? Oh, you mentioned earlier that um, preference can change on options. And um, so if these kind of questions are given on the exam, why would not be possible? Yes, of course. Yes. And basically, during your exam, I am here, the TA is here, and we're going to be answering your questions. So if you have any question about the context, we can answer. Uh, usually, if you ask me a question about the context that I miss in the paper or whatever, Instead of answering to you, I am going to stop and say, guys, if you have this question, the context or the particular details are this. So don't worry about that. You are going to have it. Uh, the questions are tricky, but not that level of tricky. I promise. Well, backward compatibility. I could put a check in that is a requirement. Uh, again, you can analyze all of this. If we understand what, what is compatibility, if we understand this idea of backward thing, it's like, yeah, can we estimate Again, is what are you telling me is that everything that is already working should still be working. You are not asking me to do anything new. Basically, you are asking me to avoid uh, destroying things. I can estimate that, right? It's like, okay, as far as I do not destroy things, good. Or as far as I can still call the methods that already exist, I am going to be fine. What I am going to do to testing that, I am going to try to open an old file, or I am going to try to run some old version of this piece. Uh, product in the system with the new one uh, is a requirement. Good. Uh, you do not need to tell me the number. The only thing is think about if that thing can be done by one person and if you can think about how long it's going to take. And that one person can be you because you are the developer. The only thing is, so far, I don't care about the number. I don't care that you tell me how long it's going to take for you. Uh, we need to talk about the money and the planning and the estimation in a very specific and professional way. Right now, for the requirement, the only thing is, if you can think about the estimation, when you think about estimating something, you are considering the details. If I show you a project, and I tell you that this project is going to be due next week, and you tell me, no, please give us more time. Uh, the reason because you are asking for more time or the justification that you need to give me for more time is, okay, you need more time, why? You think about it. So estimation is just tell me if you can estimate the time because that means that you understand what you are going to do. It's one more opportunity for you to think about, I understand the complexity or the scope of whatever is this particular line. Like the one that I showed with the Sparky. Uh, if I ask you how many days you need for the Sparky, uh, if you're familiar with video games, maybe you can quickly tell me uh, days, hours, or whatever. But if not, maybe it's going to be the first time that you do a graphical application with Java or whatever. But I am sure that you can think like, can be done. And the challenge is include threads. And the challenge is include pictures. Or the challenge is I need to draw the guy there. If I have all these things in my mind, then I cannot tell you if it's going to be a week or a month or a year, but it can be done. And I can tell you, for me, my experience is going to be months, maybe two or 10, but it's going to be months. 
it is not it is not Time. No, we're going to learn to do that later. In fact, we're going to learn about tools that help us to give those specific numbers. It's really about general. It's just all about making you think. The point of all this element <laughs> is force you to think. That's it. When I ask you, and this is going to be during the full 16 weeks. Guys, this is a requirement. What I am asking you is remember these things and just one by one check if whatever I am asking you or whatever sentence is there, fulfill all of this. That is the question when someone asks you this is a requirement or not, or that is the work of requirement engineering. Move a random sentence to something that really fulfill these elements. Don. So for negotiable, that's just making sure um, you and the customer have the same idea, um, or is it something that's supposed to be for the stakeholders? It's supposed to be for all the stakeholders. Uh, my recommendation is just think about everyone is going to understand the same. It's not just about we, uh, assuming that you are the customer or I am the customer, whatever. It's just let's think that everyone in this classroom is going to understand what are we talking about, even though they are just part of the classroom, but not exactly directly connected with our talk. But let's think about anyone can understand. Anyone in the context, the stakeholders, anyone in that company, the, comp the people in the company should understand the business, right? So the stakeholders, the people in the same context, clear? Think about this. I can ask you for a software, and that software uh, should allow me to calculate uh, the hypotenuse of the triangle. I can be sure that everyone here understands what is the hypotenuse of the triangle. Or in the worst case scenario, I can give you the equation, right? For us, for you, that is negotiable. It's an assumption that everyone, the stakeholders, understand uh, triangles and equations and algebra. It's a good assumption, unless our customer is someone from elementary school or, or something like that, that I do not think is going to be the case. But again, it's this idea of the context, right? If, if you are in that scenario, then this is not negotiable. But for us, or in the 99% of the cases, this is negotiable. Context. Good? In your exam, you are going to have the context. My context is anything that I put there. I assume university level and above. So my assumption is you know arithmetics. Good? OK. So this is a step number one. And this slide, guys, remember this slide in every single exam that we're going to have. Uh, I am reviewing final exams. And in the final exam, I am going to be reviewing with you sentence. And I am going to be pointing out this slide. And I am going to tell you your answer is wrong because one of those letters. So just be sure to remember. Those are the letters that make a requirement. Clear? OK, so moving forward. Next. There are two classifications for requirements. When you tell me that something is a requirement, when we move from this cloud to this one. We agree that something is a requirement. You agree that the things that I have on the whiteboard are requirements. The next thing that we need to think about is, OK, that requirement is functional or non-functional? Professor, another concept 
yeah, but it's going to be a concept that is going to help us with the business planning. Believe me, it's important. Why? Functional requirements. Functional requirements are going to be things that you are going to ask <laughs> one developer to do. For me, it is important to know how many functional requirements do I have because that is connected with the amount of work that my developers are going to be doing individually, but also together in a particular amount of time. We're going to talk more about it, don't worry, but identifying the functional is important because it's the work that I am going to put in the people. Clear. Second, there are something called non-functional requirements. The importance of the non-functional requirements is because the only way to achieve a non-functional requirement is not individually. Anything that is non-functional requirement is something that I am going to ask no one person to do, but the full team to do. Can we understand that difference? It's like one functional uh, is going to be her responsibility. And that, non, that functional is going to be done or not according with her finishing the work that she should do. However, a non-functional requirement, maybe he do it, he do it, he do it, but she failed. And even though we have three that do it, one fail, the non-functional is not done. Important, right? Good. Can you help me? What are the functional requirements? Something that maybe you review in your introduction to software engineering class. Functional. Remember that the things that are in red color or in some kind of color are important, right? So when I mention functional requirements during the full semester, I need you to remember those three words. Whenever you listen functional requirements, what the people is trying to tell you is this thing, that sentence is a functionality, a reaction, a function, uh, a service, a behavior of the system. You can call it whatever you want. There is one name for us to communicate and that is functional requirement. But in the background is, could be a service, could be a reaction of the system, could be a behavior of the system, depending on what you're doing. Clear something that the system do, something that is a reaction of the system, something that you consider a behavior of the system. Now that we are doing intelligent systems, uh, the behavior is kind of fancy word. Behaviors are functionalities, functional requirements. Tell me, in this list here, show Sparky jumping. You agree with me that it's a requirement, yes? Functional or not? When I ask you, it's functional, I am asking you this. Is a reaction, <laughs> behavior, service, functionality in the system? And hopefully you all agree, yes, it's a behavior of the Sparky. It's not really a service. It's more like a reaction, but it doesn't matter. It's a functional requirement. Clear. What if I ask you for the sparky dancing? Like, well, if jumping was a requirement, dancing is not so different. It's a functional requirement. Load in five seconds or less. That one is tricky. I am asking for loading or I am asking for the five second or less. What was the core for that one? Five second or less, right? So remember that everything starts with the fast and then we move to the five second or less. 
and we put load just to complete the sentence, but we really don't care about the load. The, the thing that I am asking is for the five second or less. Five second or less. That is a functionality, behavior, reaction, or whatever. Um, Is a functionality, yes or no? no? That is the tricky part. The answer is, Professor, but something is going to happen in five seconds. Yeah, that something is the requirement. But we're talking about the five seconds, and the five seconds is not the functionality. The five seconds is something else, and I am going to tell you what is, is something else. But when you are asking for something like this, you need to have a clear idea. What is this line about? This line is about this, or this line is about this? If you're following the lecture, you agree with me that that line was about this. Because I never go into the details of this. I put this use as complete the sentence. So this line is about this, five seconds. And five seconds is not a functionality because I am not describing any of this. What is those five seconds? It's a quality, a quality of the functionality, yes? But not the functionality itself. That is the tricky part. Remember what are you talking about? So this one is not one of those. Using ASU colors is a functionality, it's a behavior, it's a reaction, it's a service. Another tricky one. So functionality or not? And hopefully you agree with me like, I am the professor and I am asked to come here to teach my class using ASU colors. So the next time I am going to be here with yellow and maroon. No, it's not going to happen, but just the idea. What is the functionality? The functionality is I am going to be teaching, but with maroon and gold colors is not the functionality. Professor, but it's going to be involved in your teaching. You are going to be teaching while you are using maroon and gold. Yeah, but again, the functionality is teaching, not the maroon and gold. The maroon and gold is a quality used like fast before, not. <laughs> it's a requirement. Yes, it's a functional requirement. No, for your exam. Good. The last one, uh, Pac-Man for my web page. Assuming that we're going to do something like get Pac-Man for some, well, it's a functionality, it's a behavior, it's a service. It can be a service, so yeah, functional, clear. Anything that you tell me that is a requirement, if you already put something here, requirement, and all of them are going to be functional or non-functional. There is nothing else. So all the ones that you tell me are not functional, they are non-functional, used by the file. But remember, you already told me that they were requirements. So something that you need to remember is we have these four categories. It is a requirement or it is just a customer idea. Your work move from here to here. But when you are here, Two categories. Clear. Okay, guys, we continue next lecture. Thank you.